Hi, I'm John Punches, the training coordinator for the National Cave Rescue Commissioner NCRC. This is? My name is Eric Collin. I'm a student during the NCRC Regional. We're here at the Mentone Seminar in Mentone, Alabama, 2018, and we're going to show you a brief overview of how we do our packaging technique in the Fernal Model 71 litter. So we're going to start with an 8x10 tarp. I'm going to grab it here. And when we do this, we like to have the, the tarp actually in line, the long axis of the tarp in line with the litter. But we want one side short and one side long. Eric, can you pull it down just a little bit? There we go, that's perfect. I like to center typically the upper end of the tarp right centered on the lashing points in the litter. And we want enough of this tarp off on one side or the other, doesn't matter which, to be able to wrap around our patient and come just kind of slightly past their midriff and, and over the side. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is put in some blankets for insulation. We're going to start with one here at the head of the litter. Okay, and we're going to run this one long ways. And Eric is going to line his front corner up with the front corner of the package. And then push it down neatly into the... We're going to try to do this nice and neat so that there's no folds. Now we're going to take a second blanket, we're going to unfold this one, and this one because in the upper one we're trying to make multiple layers over the patient's torso to provide lots of insulation. This we're just interested in making sure that we have enough length to get over the patient's feet and then to double across the torso. So we're going to line this up with the with the bottom of the litter, just enough to make sure we have sufficient blanket to wrap over Eric's feet when he becomes a very willing patient. Okay. So again, the key here is where we want it located on this end. We're not trying to line the upper end up with anything particular, but we do want to make sure that the side is lined up down the side of our vapor barrier, our tarp. Nice and smooth. Okay, we're going to make sure we put a generous blanket roll underneath our patient's knees so that we can get a nice articulation there to avoid any potential for hyperextension of the knees. So I'm going to grab another blanket. I'm going to make a bulky blanket roll in my places where I anticipate my patient's knees will be. There'll be some place in there. Okay. And if my patient needs, we can also provide padding under the small of the back, under the neck. It really depends on the patient himself. Eric, what do you think? Do you want something underneath your head that we're going to Let's pat? do something over the neck. Okay, so he's going to make a little blanket roll for his neck. And again, this is very specific to the patient's injuries and their comfort level. We want to make sure that our patient's head is about three inches from the top of the litter. By having their center of gravity high in the litter, that really makes it easier for us when we're doing our litter handling through passages, when we're coming up and over edges, things of that nature. So we've got about three inches up there. Our patient, as is normal for a lot of cavers, is already wearing a harness. If he wasn't, we'd bring one in and put him in one. We're going to use his harness attachment points now to make some connections into our litter. I'm going to demonstrate a double V technique. We're going to start with the upper end of that. So I have 20 feet of webbing. I'm going to find the center of it and I'm going to pass it through the upper end of his D-link in this case. If he had a rock climbing type harness on, we'd want to make sure we grab both the waist loop and the leg loop. And I'm going to send one of these, these to each side of my patient. And we're typically going to connect to the highest side rigging point that kind of ends up on each side of my patient's ears. So I'm going to take the end of my webbing run it in, make sure I'm not having any twists in that. And we're going to give it a little bit of slack. Just in case he slides down, we prefer to not load the harness unless it's absolutely necessary. This is really here as a fail safe. I'm going to terminate this with either three half hitches, or it's also acceptable in our group to use a half hitch followed by an overhand. I'm going to demonstrate consistently in this three half hitches this evening. And I'm going to tuck the tail end down underneath this packaging to keep it from getting in the way. So we're going to do the other side quickly. I'm going to cross over. Again, no twists. A couple inches of slack. Be careful not to slap my patient in the face with the tail of the webbing. And again, three 
half hitches snug against the lashing point and tuck in the tail. We now need to secure our patient so that they can't possibly slide out the head end of the litter. That means we have to attach another double V. But the problem is we can't get to any of our lashing points right now. So we need to do a little bit of folding of our packaging in order to get access to those lower lashing points. So Eric, I'm gonna put your feet together. I'm gonna go ahead and fold over the lower end of our tarp. What I'm doing right now is just making the packaging shorter. So when we fold it up over, it doesn't cover too far up on his body. We want to have a final product that allows the medic to have easy access to our patient. I'm going to fold this up over Eric's feet. I'm going to kind of tuck it in on each side. And now I have access to the lower rigging points. So I can make another double V, or another V, excuse me. Eric is using a carabiner type D-link, and so we're going to go ahead and attach just to the top of that. If he had a screw link in there that was rated to load on the bottom side, we could load off the bottom of that D-link and make it sit flatter. I'm going to go ahead and just go right here. And you notice I'm going to interlace the two V's in this case to keep them from sliding and cross-loading on that link. Just a matter of comfort for him in the long term. And so we're going to rotate this down on each side or pass this down on each side. Again, we want no twists in that webbing. And I come all the way down to the bottom of the litter and I attach to the rigging points inside the lashing points inside the litter on the bottom. Note that I am not rigging into the, ha the rails, the handholds of the litter. So we want those available to use for that intended purpose. Again, we've got three half hitches or half hitch followed by an orient. These bottom ones, I'm just barely taking the tension out. I don't know if you can see, but this, his seat harness D-link is not flexing. I don't want to pull that so that it becomes upright and causes any pressure against his, his groin area. Okay, so now we have the double V's in place so that he can't slide either direction. What we want to do now is go ahead and attach a tether that we can extend from the patient and have that come out so that whenever we're using rigging that 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 rigging can connect, have a direct connection into his harness. This is kind of the ultimate fail safe in case we have abrasion of our attachment points that might cause those to fail or something of that nature. I'm gonna start by making a water knot or an overhand bite at one end of a approximately 10 foot piece of webbing. And I'm gonna kind of measure that out against the point of my upper bridle, my short bridle. So that starts there. It's going to end up down here, but I know that in the process of loading the system, this is going to stretch and get longer, so this is going to pull out ways, and he may move a little bit in the litter, so when I measure this out to get my length, I'm going to add in usually about six inches or so, plus a little bit more for my knot, and make a second overhand bite or water knot, and we're going to go ahead and attach that into his harness. Now, you could tie this directly in or use his attachment directly to make that. In NCRC we tend to go ahead and attach that with a carabiner even though it is kind of a belay attachment point there. This is all encapsulated in the packaging and so we know everything lays smooth. By years of experience we know that we don't have any problems with that getting cross loaded. And so for now I'm just going to tuck this in off to the side and it'll end up inside his packaging. Before we proceed we want to make provision for providing ongoing vitals for our patient. We do that even for our mock patients, our students who are working through this scenario, there's complications that can be experienced from being in litter for long periods of time. So we want to have regular access to check vitals. I have my little kit here with my basic vital checking equipment. I'm going to start with a stethoscope and uh, we will often go ahead and pre-position a stethoscope on our patient so that we can have easy access to take his vitals. We're gonna put a little coban or vet wrap. Just kind of put that in place. Under ideal circumstances, this can allow the medic to actually take those vitals without actually opening up all the packaging. But if they have to, they can. And then we often will go ahead and if the VP cuff will accommodate um, we take off the actual meter from its attachment point here and just allow the 
the tubes and devices to extend out. Uh, we're going to index it off this artery and just kind of wrap it upside down and we can go right across that stethoscope in most cases. So now we've got all access here for a medic to get easy access to that. If anything happens, they can always open the packaging back up. I'm going to go ahead and put some goggles on Eric for eye protection. We may as well do that now. Are those comfortable? Yes, they are. Okay. We're going to go ahead and finish our exterior packaging. We're going to go ahead and start on the short side. Give it a little bit of a kind of a fold corner here. And just very neatly wrap this up and over. And again, we want it to come just past the midriff, kind of no further than here. So someplace between here and here is ideal. Well, that gives us kind of a of ability to, to shed water and make sure that we're going to have a good kind of shingled system here when it's all done. I'm going to start by folding the entire thing in and making it shorter because obviously we've got much more packaging than what we need for Eric. I'm going to make this shorter. I'm going to give myself my little fold over. That's nice neat. And then we're going to fold this to the opposite side. And again, we want this side to be long enough that, that any water coming on there would shed like a shingled roof. We just want to make sure that no water can get into our patient. And yet we want it to be nice and smooth, nice and neat and even. So now we're going to go ahead and apply the foot loop. So again, 20 feet of one inch webbing. And in this case, we're not looking for the center of the webbing. We're just looking for enough of a strap to pass across my patient. So my first strap here is actually going to keep his thighs and knees from bending. So Eric, is this your kneecap right here? That's yes. your knee, okay. So we're going to come to the, the lashing point either immediately above or immediately below. So I'm looking for the lashing point. So unfortunately, the, the, the lashing point that would be best is right on top of Eric's knee. That's a really common thing. So we're going to go up to the one just above it. And so I'm going to start at that point. I'm going to measure across and give myself about 10 inches or a foot of extra. And then I'm going to go ahead and bend or make a bite in my webbing at that point. I'm going to come across on this opposite side. And I'm going to pass it up and through this lashing point directly across from the one that I pointed out just a moment ago. And I'm going to pass both legs of the webbing all the way through. And I attach on that side with a nice snug girth hitch. I'm going to take the short piece come across my packaging. I'm going to come through the lashing point opposite where I made my attachment. I want that to be nice and snug, but I want to make sure that there's no bends or twists in that web. So I'm going to pass that through. I'm going to get that nice and snug. This is a pretty, this is absolutely a critical component here because we don't want his his thighs to be bending at the, at the knees there because that could allow his upper body to shift in the packaging. So that's nice and snug. I'm gonna go ahead and start my half hitch. I'm gonna reach down here with my finger and capture that progress. I'm gonna push that half hitch all the way down against that lashing point. Once I've done that first one, then it's easy for me to come in and terminate that with two more half hitches. Okay. Now, at this point, I have a long piece left, and I'm going to redirect that back down and come under my patient's instep. So I'm going to take the time to make sure my patient's feet are together. I'm going to wrap this under his instep, trying to avoid making any twists in the line. And I'm going to come up and find a lashing point. It can be the one I started at or it could potentially be a little bit lower if I need extra length. I think I'm going to have plenty of length, and so I'm going to come up here. I've got easy access to this original lashing point. I'm going to pass my webbing through it. Pull it back through. I'm going to make sure I don't have any twists, and so one little trick here is to just pull up a little slack, push all the twists down to that lashing point, pull it through to this side where it's easy to deal with. Okay, now at this point, the, la the foot loop is here to make sure that our patient cannot slide down in the litter when vertically, vertically oriented. In cave rescue, most of our passages kind of force us into a vertical orientation to make our extrication. So we don't want our patient to slide down. So we're going to go ahead and just apply some force, pulling in on each side of the thing here until, until my patient actually starts to move up slightly in the litter. That way I know that I've fully compressed the packaging and, I, and I'm not going to have him sliding once he loads that. I'm going to make a half hitch here to capture that progress. So I 
I've started it. Again, I'm going to reach in, I'm going to pinch it, and I'm going to pull that back against it and snug that. Now this is the one time in this packaging where I'm using a single half hitch. This is just an intermediate step to capture this progress. I'm going to use the rest of this to, to finish my packaging. So now I have a webbing. I'm going to redirect it down through. I'm going to come to this, typically this bottom lashing point for a very short patient. You might use one slightly higher on the litter. Not concerned about twists there because it doesn't actually touch my patient. And now I'm going to come over the upper side of my patient's feet. So I'm going to take the time to kind of rearrange that. I'm going to wrap this across. I'm going to come through the lashing point on this other side. Make that nice and snug. Now, at this point, if I'm short on webbing, I can simply tie off with my three half inches and be done. I think I have enough here, though, to add a little extra um, resiliency to the system and redundancy. And I'm going to pass it back over his feet one more time, but this time I'm going to come underneath my foot loop on each side. And that's going to help me kind of pin that foot loop in place so it can neither slide down nor up. And that's going to make sure it stays on his feet. So can you see the, the cross we've done there? So we went over the top. I'm coming back under. Whether you go over first or under first doesn't matter. We just want to be able to capture that twice if possible. Now I'm going to come through on the other side. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to find where my foot loop is. It's buried in the packaging this time. I'll find that foot loop. Make sure that that's nice and flat. I'm going to push that down behind my foot loop. Okay, now before I tie off, I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is all properly tensioned. This needs to be quite snug unless you have some injury that contradicts it. Now this is my tail, and I'm going to go ahead and lash that into the lashing point on the litter. Got to make sure that we do not try to tie that off to any of the other webbing directly. So see that I've got it into the lashing point of the litter here coming into the lashing point. Now I'm going to go ahead again and terminate it with my three half inches. In this case, I've got two pieces of webbing very close to each other, and so I can lash around both of those simultaneously. It doesn't hurt anything in that case. That just makes it a little bit easier to get that final point. And we're going to get lucky here and have just enough webbing to terminate that and have about four inches left over. So we have the foot loop fully in place. It provides the thigh strap. It provides the loop under the feet, under the instep. It's been quite tightened to compress the packaging. And then we've got the redirect through the, the lashing point coming across and then back. On the way back, we're capturing underneath the foot loop on both sides and then tying off to the lashing point. All right, now, everything's secure on that end. Packaging's well contained, we're waterproof. Now we need to do something to secure his torso. So I'm gonna grab my fifth piece of 20 foot webbing. This time I am going to use the center. And I'm going to find the lashing point that's one point above where I started my foot loop. So we're going to go right here. I'm just going to lay the center of that in the center of my patient. And I'm going to come across on each side here. I'm going to find my lashing point and I'm going to put my fish my webbing through that. Be a little careful here because I want to keep that approximately centered. And I don't want any twists in that again. Okay. So then I've got to do that on each side. All right. So now we have the first part of our upper lashing. Now, with upper lashing, we want to make sure that we're securing the torso adequately. And whether we make a single X or multiple X's really depends on the, the injuries the person has sustained uh, and th their body configuration. Every patient's gonna fit in this a little bit different. So I like to get to this point and then I just kind of see where I can provide adequate stabilization without getting any of this lashing across my patient's airway. So in this case, it looks like with Eric's configuration, if I come to these upper side rigging points that I can get a nice, X across his upper body, and that's going to give me plenty of stabilization. So that's what I'm going to choose to do here. 
going to make sure that everything's out of the way. And we've already got the, the upper V lashing in there. That's not going to hurt anything. Okay, nice and flat. I'm going to go ahead and terminate this with my three half hitches. I'm not really concerned about making this especially tight at this point because I'm going to have an opportunity to do that in a moment. So one, here's two, and here is three. I'm going to tuck that out of the way as we've done with our others. Now, for my last one over here, I am going to want to make this snug and take up the tension. So I'm going to go ahead and get it started. I normally work from the other side, but we'll let you see from this side for the camera angle. Open that up a little bit. Working carefully around my patient's face. We've got no twists in that. I'm going to go ahead and start a V, or start a half hitch rather. Okay, and now at this point, I want to go ahead and just tension this by pulling this direction, pulling this direction, kind of getting it started. And Eric, can you just take in a nice deep breath for me? Is that okay? Everything good? Okay, so hold that breath for just a moment for me, if you will. I'm going to go ahead and just tighten there. I'm going to grab that extra. Okay, Eric, how is that? Is that okay? You can breathe okay, and yet you feel quite snug and secure? Feels comfortable. Very good. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and finish terminating this then with our final two half hitches. And we're going to tuck in the rest. And Eric is well secured. And at this point, really, the only thing that remains is if we wanted to provide some extra insulation around Eric's head, we could grab one more blanket. We could make a bulky blanket, or actually make a long blanket roll here. We've left some space above Eric's head to kind of fill this void with some blanket. Okay, Eric. That's a little too much. We're going to fill all that void in there with extra blanket, kind of nestle him in. And then we could secure that actually with duct tape coming across and across and we're taping the blanket in place. We're not taping the blanket to our patient's head. So that concludes the packaging in the Ferno for a patient with moderate injuries or medical condition. You noted that there were no special considerations made here for long bone injuries or rib injuries or pelvic injuries. We have modifications to the system for that and those will appear in future videos.